A great civilization without a culture. Stało się wielkimi cywilizacjami nie posiadającymi kultury. So, but when once the Saraswati River is surfaced, ale, ale kiedy po prostu rzeka Saraswati pojawiła się taka świetna dziedzina. Where all the reference in the Vedas is always to the culture on the Saraswati River, gdzie wszystkie referencje w Vedach odnoszą się właśnie do kultury nad nad brzegami rzeki Saraswati, the riddle was solved. Więc zagadka została rozwiązana. But it has not been publicized. Ale to nie zostało po prostu upublicznione, a nie opublikowane. Why? Dlaczego? Because Europe, ponieważ Europa is really afraid of this. Bardzo boi się tego odkrycia. Very afraid. Bardzo się tego boi. Because, ponieważ he destroys the idea of any superiority coming from Because the root of our language is in Sanskrit. It also means the root of our culture. If we go a little deeper into this topic, you will find out that the very word culture, it actually means worship. You must have heard. People say, oh, there are so many cults around the world. Cult means the way of worshiping God. Culture doesn't mean a, a techno party and kids dancing three days on, on ecstasy. At least it's not a, it's not a culture which is, was meant to be in the name of God. It is like a cult is an offering. And we find it in all ethnic groups of the world. Offerings make offerings. South American indigenous people make offerings. India's tradition is full of offerings. So the question is to whom do they offer? That is, that is culture. We can worship Mother Earth. We can worship the holy rivers and mountains. We can worship the, the, the sun. And the moon. We can uh, worship the origin of consciousness. We can worship the Divine Mother. All these worships are very traditional. And they all come from India. The Chinese, they used to exclaim, what can we do with the Indians? Okay. They worship everything. They even worship the trees, the plants, the animals, the cow. In India we worship everything. 
you will be interested. And the Indian people, Hindusi, when they were talking about the Chinese, they would say, oh my god, these Chinese. They eat everything. <laughs> Indiscriminately. <laughs> Anyhow, that's a little joke. Okay, that, that was, uh, that uh -huh. But uh, the fact is that uh, India is the land of worship. It's the land of non-violence. It's the land of non-violence. It is a land of peace and prosperity. And it has been always very generous with the world. Sharve Bhavantu Shukila means let the whole world be happy. That nobody should be sick. That everybody in the world should have the proper spiritual vision. Dukkha Bhagavad that the whole world must be happy. It's always the Adventist Sashti. Om Shanti 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 Hi. That is the the Brian Aradya uh, Upanishad uh, instruction. First text said no Upanishad. According to Vedic tradition, you should never be an aggressor against anybody. And you can tell. Nobody can say in the history of mankind that he has been threatened or blackmailed to turn into a Hindu or a follower of Sanatan Dharma. So it's very surprising that all of a sudden the whole world, the whole world is becoming interested in what's happening with these Vedic cultures. And that's what the West was fearing. That's why we have tried to discredit all the world and impose uh, the Eurocentristic uh, worldview and uh, hegemon. But now we find of a sudden that yoga is very important. That Ayurveda is a fantastic way of curing and having preventive medicine. And that there is no better nutrition in the world than the vegetarian diet. And even sciences like Vastu Shastra are becoming increasingly uh, important or accepted the appropriate distribution of spaces. But that's nothing. The important thing is 
who to worship. Maybe you use naturopaths, acupuncture, uh, phytotherapy, you mean so many ways to cure the body. In South America, we have a, a hospital of Aymara uh, Natural Cures. So there's so many, every, every, every culture has it. This system of curing. But the question of who to worship, who to offer your respect to, that's the first and foremost question. Now I don't want to go get into any into religious polemics. It's not my interest. But nevertheless, we have to accept that the original Christians, they believed in God. And I and I, I for an eye, two for two. They also believed in reincarnation. Just recently, the Pope, uh, the Pope, did, he said Origenes was one of the greatest philosophers of the Christian church. And Origenes was condemned because he was teaching reincarnation. I don't know, maybe they are preparing the ground for accepting reincarnation. But at least they revindicated Originus, who was condemned by ten anathemas. And anybody who dared to talk about Origenes in the last 1,500 years was killed. No, we are not talking about soft stuff. Actually, it's more hardcore than, than Hollywood. Now, also Christians, they believed in Atmagyan. They believed that the animals have souls. But Romans, they were animal killers. So when they made the deal, Christianity becoming world religion. State religion, as I said. Yes. Then they had to accept that the Romans came on with the eating of meat and drinking of wine. I mean, mystical Christianity and an Indian Vaishnava philosophy it is so similar. It is so close to each other. So those who said that Jesus went for uh, for many years of his life to study in India. I mean, I wasn't there with him, so I cannot certify the truth of it. But it sounds quite reasonable. 
But it doesn't matter. Because a good Christian, he knows number one and foremost, loving God above everything. Number two, love thy neighbor as thyself. And number three, thou shalt not kill. Here we are. Spiritual people means all love. That's what I'm trying to prove here. Anybody who doesn't conduct himself lovingly, anybody who is aggressive, hurts others, he doesn't believe in God. Period. Who kills women does not believe in God. Who kills babies does not believe in God. Because if you believe in God, you don't do it. You cannot. It's impossible. I cannot go to God and say, Oh, my, my dear Lord, this brother of mine, no good for nothing. Is it okay with you I killed him? No. Yeah. Thou shalt not kill. I already told you. But for my food. No. Genesis. Genesis should eat the fruits. The, from the trees, the greens, yeah. the, all, the, all that which I have given to you shall be your food. And it goes on like that. We can argue and argue. 